When starting the truck, the driver must consider safety first. In an emergency situation, a fire extinguisher is used to control small fires. Extinguishers must be securely mounted and fully charged. City and air horns must function properly to warn other traffic of your presence. Mirrors enable the drivers to see areas behind and to the sides of the vehicle. Mirrors must be securely mounted and adjusted before operating the vehicle. Vehicles must have an emergency triangle kit consisting of three reflective triangles. The purpose of the triangles are to direct the traffic away from the truck on the side of the road. A driver conducting a safe start must first place the vehicle in neutral. With the left foot engaged, the clutch all the way to the floor. While the clutch is engaged, start the engine. Once the vehicle has reached idling speed, release the clutch. Applicants must be aware of any lights that are illuminated after the startup of the vehicle. You must ensure that the ABS light indicator illuminates and then promptly turns off. If this indicator remains on, please search out for a service provider. While the truck engine is idling, check both wipers to ensure the blades are secure and operating correctly. Verify the washer fluids are working properly. The windshield must be clear from obstructions and free from dirt, debris, or cracks that could cause the driver to lose visibility of other motorists, traffic, or changes in the road. Applicants must ensure the selector of the heater is readable and that the vent is blowing out air. When leaving the truck, always remember to engage the parking and trailer brakes. This safety feature will keep the vehicle from rolling. It is best practice to check the parking brakes on the truck and the trailer. When checking the parking brake, make sure both are engaged. First, I will release the parking brake. Then I will place the truck in gear and gently place my foot on the accelerator. If a tugging motion occurs, the brake is engaged and working. First, release the trailer parking brake. Then I will place the truck in gear and gently place my foot on the accelerator. If a tugging motion occurs, the brake is engaged and working. The temperature gauge measures the water temperature in an engine's cooling system in the engine block. When reading this gauge, keep in mind that it's only telling hot or cold. The oil gauge is at the proper operating range. This gauge will ensure that the engine has sufficient lubrication to prevent engine failure, seizure, or breakdown. The gauge should be in the standard operating range. The voltmeter gauge shows that the generator or alternator is charging, functioning, and in the standard operating range. The air gauge informs the driver the amount of pressure in the braking system. It should be between 120 to 140 at the governed cutout. Fuses and breakers protect the electrical system. It is good to have a few extra for safety. The dashboard indicator lights for signals, flashers, and headlight beams indicate which functions are active or warns of problems of vehicle components. I'm going to turn on my left indicator light to see if it is functioning. I'm going to turn on my right indicator to see if it is functioning. I'm going to turn my hazards on to make sure they are functioning properly. I'm going to turn on my high and low beams to make sure they are functioning properly. To properly check if there's a leak in your air system, you will first start by turning the engine on. You will build your air pressure up to about 120 and release your brakes. Once the air brake check is complete, you must conduct an air leak rate test. Once the air stabilizes, I will apply the service brake. While watching the air pressure gauge, wait till the pressure stabilizes again. When it has stabilization, make sure it does not lose more than four pounds of pressure in one minute. While in the driver's seat, it is important that the low air warning indicator is properly working. Once your pressure is built up to 120 pounds of pressure, and turn your engine off, turn your key to the on position, and let your gauges stabilize. 
Then you're gonna find pressure and hold for one minute. You shouldn't lose more than four PSI. While in the driver's seat, it is important that the low air warning indicator is properly working. To perform this action, one must check to see if the ignition is still in the on position. Then you're going to fan your brakes by pumping the brake. My low air warning device should come on or at 60 PSI. I will continue to do this to check my emergency brakes. The trailer and parking brakes will pop out between 20 to 40 PSI. I will now perform a hydraulic brake check to ensure the right amount of pressure is applied in the case of an emergency. I'm going to pump my brake pedal three times and hold it for five seconds and observe that my pedal doesn't fade. This module will identify the components in the engine compartment. Other training modules include the engine start, axles, couplings, and special school bus features. We will now move on to the part of the inspection that requires you to demonstrate knowledge of the engine. Maintaining engine components and fluid levels are imperative for proper vehicle operation. Always turn the engine off while checking the oil. The recommended oil level should be above the refill mark of the dipstick. Next, check the power steering fluid. Remember, the power steering fluid level should also read above the refill mark. If the vehicle's power steering is belt driven, inspect the belt for excessive wear and proper tension. Pushing on the belt should not cause it to deflect more than one half to three quarters of an inch. If you find the belt is too loose, adjust it at once. The steering linkage and the steering box are essential parts of the vehicle steering system and have many moving parts. Examine all components of the steering system to include the drag link, pitman arm, and tie rods. Excessive movement in the steering linkage can cause the vehicle to drift, causing a potential accident. Letting the engine coolant level get too low in the vehicle can result in vehicle overheating. It is important to check the reservoir and keep the coolant level filled. The water pump plays an important role in the vehicle's cooling system. If the pump is not firmly connected or the belt is too loose, the engine might overheat and cause more damage. The belt must not show any signs of frays, cracks, or loose fibers. It should not deflect more than one half to three quarters of an inch when pushed. The alternator works with the battery to generate power as you drive. It must be secure and all wires connected for it to operate properly. If the alternator is belt driven, it must be tight enough that when the belt is pressed, it does not flex more than one half to three quarters of an inch. The last major component of the engine compartment is the air compressor. The air compressor pumps air into the storage reservoirs. These storage tanks then supply air to the brakes to apply pressure when stopping. Brakes that lose air pressure can cause a loss of control. The air compressor needs to be bolted in tightly and free of leaks. It is also important to check the belt's tension frequently. It is important to check all hoses in the engine compartment. Any loose or cracked hoses could lead to fluid or air loss causing a critical system failure. Taking the time to learn the safety and security aspects of the vehicle will help you prepare for the pre-trip portion of the CDL test. 
This module will identify the components and the exterior features. Other training modules include the engine start, axles, couplings, and special school bus features. To ensure both the driver and passenger safety, always check that both the inside light controls and the outside vehicle lights are working. This includes turn signals, high and low beam headlights, four-way flashers, tail lights, and brake lights. Remember, when checking any of the vehicle exterior lights, look for any type of damage such as cracks and make sure the lights are clean. It is acceptable for you as the driver to request assistance from the examiner when checking the operation of the lights. The examiner may be asked to indicate with a hand signal that the light being tested turns on before moving on to the next light. For this demonstration, begin by turning on the left turn signal. Now, the right turn signal. Next, turn on the four-way flashers. Now, turn on the headlights on low beam. And then the high beam. Check the lights at the rear of the vehicle in the same pattern, adding the tail and brake lights. Certain commercial vehicles require reflective tape and clearance lights to help identify both the length and height of the vehicle. Identify excessive wear or damage and mention that it would need to be replaced. Clearance lights must be working and of the proper color, amber in the front, red to the rear, to maintain safe vehicle operation. Drivers must ensure the cargo doors open freely, the hinges cannot be damaged and the latch must close securely. Properly functioning landing gear is critical. Each time the trailer is dropped, the landing gear keeps the trailer secure. Always ensure the landing gear is maintained and functions. If it is power operated, look for leaks. A leaky fuel tank is not only dangerous for the driver, but also for the surrounding area. Drivers need to visually inspect the outside of the fuel tank and fuel cap for damage. The catwalk is a platform used to connect and disconnect trailer lines and sometimes is a storage area. Remember, when inspecting the catwalk, pay close attention to the frame and its cross members. Damage such as cracks or bends are another danger to safe truck operation. The header board or bulkhead is located in the same area. The header board must be free of damage in order to hold the cargo during a sudden stop. Examine the bulkhead for any sign of cracks, bulges, or missing rivets. Taking the time to learn the safety and security aspects of the vehicle will help you prepare for the pre-trip portion of the CDL test. The tires, rims, suspension, and brakes. Please take note that any like items on the rear of the vehicle and the trailer are checked the exact same way with the following exceptions. A tire inspection includes tread depth, condition, and inflation. If these are not properly monitored, it could lead to tire failure, tread separation, hydroplaning, or affect the ability to turn the vehicle. While all tires should be examined when preparing to drive the vehicle, for the purposes of this pre-chip examination video, we will only examine one front and one rear tire. The minimum tread depth on the front axle tires is 4 30 seconds of an inch. All other truck and trailer tires should have a minimum of 2 30 seconds of an inch of tread depth. Check to ensure the tread is evenly worn. Watch out for large portions of missing tread. Tread and tire sidewalls cannot show damage such as cuts or bulges. All valve stems and caps have to be present and undamaged. Check tires for proper inflation. This must be done with a tire gauge. 
Kicking or pounding the tire is not acceptable for inspection. Rims cannot be damaged. Damaged rims could cause the wheel to fall off the axle or the tire to lose pressure. Types of damage to look for are welding repairs, bent rims, or rust trails, which mean the rim is loose. Drivers must also ensure that the wheels have all lug nuts present and that they are properly tightened. Cracks starting from the bolt holes or distorted bolts would be an indication of a potentially serious problem. Hub oil or axle seals need to be checked for leaks. Some vehicles have a sight glass to observe the oil level to make sure it is adequate. In order for the drive axle to turn, power must be transmitted through the drive shaft from the transmission. The drive shaft cannot be crooked or split, and the U-joints have to be firmly attached and clear of any debris. Check to make sure the exhaust system shows no signs of damage, such as cracks, dents, or holes. Look for any leaks and make sure it is attached tightly to the engine and has no loose clamps. If rust or carbon soot is noticed, it may be a sign that the clamps are loose. The vehicle maintains its stability by having a strong, complete frame. There should be no missing or loose cross members. Always examine the long part of the frame and the cross members for any damage such as cracks or bends. Wheel vibration caused by driving over rough roads is lessened by leaf or coil springs. Any leaves that are damaged or missing could cause an accident. If the vehicle springs are out of place, they could possibly hit a tire, interfering with driving. Part of this system includes the air ride suspension, which will also be looked at for any damage or leaks. Spacers or bud spacers may be located on the axle collar between dual wheels to keep the wheels evenly separated. If the wheel has spacers, the applicant will check to see that they are not bent, damaged, or rusted. The bud wheels should be spaced evenly, not damaged, and free of foreign objects. The suspension assembly is affixed to the axle using both U-shaped bolts and mounting bolts. All bolts required must be present, tightened properly, and in good condition. The air or brake fluid is moved using hoses and lines. Drivers must check that hoses and lines are in excellent condition and all couplings and fittings are properly attached and have no leaks. If there are electric brakes, those lines have to be affixed tightly and the covering cannot be worn or split. Air pressure is applied to a piston in the brake chamber, which then applies pressure to the brakes. The brake chamber must not have any damage or leaks and has to be tightly fastened to the vehicle for the brakes to function properly. In order to adjust the slack in the brake linkage, a vehicle has slack adjusters and push rods. Improperly mounted or damaged slack adjusters or push rods could lead to locked up wheels or increased stopping distance. When the brakes are released and the push rod is pulled, the movement should not be more than one inch. Brakes may fail to work if the brake drums are cracked. Brake linings or brake drums cannot be overly eroded as this would create heat buildup. The drums or rotors cannot be damaged in any way. There should not be any grease or oil in the brake drums or linings. Splash guards or mud flaps are used to stop objects from being thrown back and damaging other vehicles. Drivers that have vehicles equipped with splash guards must ensure they are mounted securely and free of damage. Taking the time to learn the safety and security aspects of the vehicle will help you prepare for the pre-trip portion of the CDL test. This includes coupling systems for a truck, trailer, and semi-trailer. Each driver will only be required to demonstrate the coupling system on the vehicle in which they are testing.
The first coupling system we'll look at is also the most common type called a fifth wheel coupling and is used on most trucks, tractors, and semi-trailers. The fifth wheel skid plate and locking jaw mechanism are held on a mounting called the platform base. If the platform base has any structural damage, such as cracks or breaks, or if there are any parts missing, the fifth wheel could detach. Check the platform to ensure it is attached tightly to the frame or sliding assembly. The trailer rests on the fifth wheel skid plate. A faulty skid plate and an improper connection with the tractor and fifth wheel can result in handling problems. The fifth wheel skid plate needs to be properly lubricated and properly attached to the platform and cannot be missing any parts such as bolts or pins. Trucks, trailers, and tractor-truck combinations all utilize mounting bolts. If bolts are missing or loose, it could cause dangerous movement between the frame and the coupling assembly. Loose bolts could also snap off, causing loss of trailer. If the vehicle has a sliding fifth wheel, drivers will confirm there are no loose or missing pins. If it is air-powered, drivers will also inspect for leaks. The fifth wheel must be positioned so that the tractor frame will clear the landing gear during turns. On a fifth wheel, the metal plate that attaches to the trailer and provides a surface for resting the trailer on is called the apron. Make sure the visible part of the apron is not bent and has no cracks or breaks. The kingpin is necessary to attach the trailer to the tractor. Any damage to the kingpin could cause the trailer to detach. Verify that the kingpin is not damaged and that the kingpin lock is in place when it is attached to the truck. The locking jaws or lever provide a connection around the kingpin and where the trailer connects. If the locking mechanism is not properly fastened, the trailer could unhook while being pulled. Confirm that the fifth wheel locking jaws or lever is properly placed on the kingpin. The release arm has to be engaged with the locking jaws closed completely around the kingpin. The release must be checked to ensure it is in the proper position. If it has a safety latch, it must be in place. The last item to check on this coupling is called gap. There should be no daylight visible between the fifth wheel and the apron. Air and electrical lines connect the air supply and electrical power between the power unit and the trailer. Lines cannot drag against the truck or tractor and must be free of tangles or pinches. Worn, cut, or splice lines should be replaced before operation of the vehicle. Air lines will also be checked for leaks. The air connectors will be in good condition and properly sealed. Ensure the trailer electrical plug is tightly installed and locked on both the truck and the trailer. There are several other types of couplings and accessories used on commercial motor vehicles. One of these is a pinnel hook. Broken welds or missing parts in the pinnel hook could cause a vehicle to lose the trailer. Drivers must check the pinnel hook for any damage or extreme deterioration. Trucks and trailers have safety devices such as latches, chains, and cables to keep the vehicle secure. One example is the safety latch or locking mechanism on the hitch release lever. This is intended to keep the lever closed. Safety chains need to be hooked and crisscrossed properly. In order for safety chains to be effective, they cannot have any kinks or extra slack and must have all the cotter pins in place. A rare type of coupling found on some large utility vehicles is a sliding pintle. If the vehicle has a sliding pintle, the driver needs to make sure it is attached tightly and has no loose or missing parts. If it is not locked, 
the trailer could shift while driving, which would cause the vehicle to lose the trailer. Some commercial motor vehicles pull trailers that have several features that need to be inspected. Near the front of the trailer is the tongue or drawbar, which is used for joining a trailer to a straight truck. For the tongue or drawbar to work properly, it must be straight and cannot have any broken welds or cracks. The tongue storage area is a platform located on the tongue of the trailer and is used for storage. Drivers must check the storage area to ensure everything is attached to the tongue. Any cargo in the storage area, such as chains or binders, must be firmly fastened down.